So I've got DaVinci Resolve running on my iPad. It's running like a dream. And whilst it's the full cut page and color page from the full version, there are a few little things that are slightly different because it's on an iPad. So in this episode, I wanna show you what they are, how to get running on your iPad super quick and enjoying Resolve. So let's go and take a look. So DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I've got the 11 inch M1 model here, so it's slightly older, but I promise you DaVinci Resolve is absolutely flying on this thing. I've got a couple of extra peripherals as well here with me. I've got the speed editor. So this is obviously Bluetooth connecting to DaVinci Resolve, working beautifully on the iPad. I've got a little SSD drive here because I've not got much internal storage on here. So USB-C connects straight into the side of the iPad. I've got the Apple Pencil. This is working really well with DaVinci Resolve as well. Obviously you can use your finger as well but I tend to use the pencil. And I've also got the dedicated keyboard and trackpad that comes for iPad. I have tested it with my MX Keys Bluetooth. It works great. So the first thing you're gonna notice is you've only got the cut page and the color page, but this is no problem because they are the full feature set. So you're gonna have full nonlinear editing with full beautiful color grading and color management. Everything that you're used to is in there. So if I go to here and go to color management, you've got all the settings in there that you're gonna need for all your projects. So it's not been de-featured in any way. You just haven't got the fusion page and you haven't got the Fairlight page. So let's start on the cut page. Now, the first thing it took me a little while to work out is how do you actually right click? How do you actually get anything into the system? So you need to right click and say import on your media page. Now to right click, hold your finger down, just for longer than a moment, and then you'll see your right click. So let me do that with the pencil, and there you go. So it's not that long. People are saying it's a little bit laggy, but yeah, I you get really used to it, it doesn't bother me at all. There's no menus, so you don't have your traditional menus. These are obviously allowing you to make your GUI however you want it. But down here, you do have undo, redo, and delete. So let's have a look at the transitions, and if I click in here, and you've got all the transitions that you're used to, so let me just grab a classic cross dissolve, drag and drop that on into the center and that's good to go. So you can edit the duration with your finger. I can use the pencil here. And one thing I wanted to do was set my, I set my default duration to much less than one second. So if I click on that, go to my inspector, I couldn't find where it was, but I found it now. And if I click in here and make that, I want to make that 12 frames. You see, you get this nice box comes up, numeric keypad box. I'll make that 12 frames set as default duration. So that is now my default. So you'll find it in the inspector. Some of the things that were in menus are now in the inspector. So you've got the voice isolation is in there as well now. So one thing I always found useful with the cut page was reformatting for TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, that sort of thing, because it had the nine by 16 mode. Now in version 18.1, they've introduced that at timeline level. So if we click on our master settings up here, we can say use vertical resolution, say save. And if I go to the end of my timeline, I've got a shot of me vlogging. And if I click on that image, what I can do now is zoom in. Okay, and I'm just gonna offset that a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit wonky. And what I want to do is get to DaVinci Resolve to actually reframe that automatically for me. So we've got Smart Reframe here. This has been in there for a while, but I just wanna show you the speed that it's doing it. So I'm gonna press Reframe. And what it's doing now, it's gonna centralize that clip as best fit for that portrait mode. And we can just play that back. Look how fast it did that. Now, if you have two people talking on here, it will automatically reframe to the person who is talking at that moment. So it's really cool. Okay, so let's switch that back to regular mode. So I'm just working in 1920 by 1080 here, and let's come off that unfortunate shot. So let's switch to the color page. So in here, I've got a few nodes going on here. If I want to add another serial node, you just click up here, and this is actually a pull down menu. So you'll see as I right click, you've got add serial, add parallel, add layer. You can right and click on these nodes to bring up various things. So if I want to label that node, node label, there's a keypad icon appears here if you don't have a keyboard attached. So you can just type in here, exposure, for example. If I want to grab a still of this, just right hand click in here. Grab still, that's done, so that's your gallery. We can switch the gallery on and off. And you've got the full feature set in here. So you've got HDR tools, you've got all your curves, everything is in here. And one nice thing on here, if you're playing around, so let's say we just do a little bit of offset on here. If you want to adjust temperature, we can literally slide, or you can double click and actually type in a value. Now, obviously there's no menus at the top, so if you want to do things like output blanking, you'll find that in another mode. So if I click on this shot here, just so you can see what's going on, and if we go into our resizing and we switch to output sizing, then you'll see here you've got your blanking. So if you want to put blanking on that open and top, you can add that in there. And obviously if you're bringing this from a project from a full version of Resolve, this is where it would recognize those settings. 
Now, because we've gone to output sizing, we're in clip versus timeline mode. So we're now in timeline mode. So how do we switch that back to clips? Well, that's up here. Again, let's pull down menu. And obviously, if you're doing grouping, you would multiple select clips, right and click. And then you say add into a new group, and then your grouping would appear in that menu as well. The only thing I found that's missing is Lightbox. So I'm hoping they bring that in in a future version because I do love Lightbox. All your effects are in here. So remember, let's just add an effect. Maybe what have I got going on here? I've got contrast pop in here. Okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's utilize some old keyboard shortcuts. So Shift and F gives you a really nice uh, size for the GUI for seeing your image and gives you all the controls you need for contrast pop. So you want to revisit those because you're working on an iPad. So Shift F that is, and Command F will give you full screen mode. And the quality of the image in reference mode on the 12.9 inch iPad is fantastic. So let's get rid of our effects. Let's have a look at the LUTs. So you've got all the built-in LUTs that you'd expect. If you want to bring in your own LUTs, you need to access the actual file. So if you click in here, go to Files, go to DaVinci Resolve, and you'll see in there there's a LUT folder. So you can literally drag and drop your LUTs into there, and they will then appear in DaVinci Resolve. The other thing that's in a different menu, if you click here, you've got your image wipe, split screen, and highlight as three different toggles. So if I go to highlight mode, then you see your different highlight modes down here. So that's now in a pull down menu. Switching between timeline and clips is here. And then when you're ready to export, set the setting that you want it to be. So if you want it to be ultra HD, just pull it down here. Let's do that. And then all you've got to do is press export, and that is now set to 3840 by 2160. Choose which render engine you want. So if we want ProRes, the M2 iPads have a ProRes optimization for the ProRes engine there, so it really flies. Or you can go straight up to your YouTube channel or whatever you want to do. So if you're used to working in the edit page and you want to know a bit more about how to use the cut page properly, check out this video here. Enjoy using your iPad, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.